Serious, what secret could ruin your life? I get paid a six-figure salary for a standard 40-hour-a-week corporate job for a massive well-known company. In a given week I do maybe an hour of actual work. The rest of the time I am on Reddit or Yautub slacking off. I thought when I got this job that eventually someone would figure out I don't do anything all day but here I am 14 years later still doing duck all and getting paid a lot for it. A while back. I was cheating on my wife with a co-worker. It went on for months. And I never really cared for the woman I was cheating with. She was super hot. Though. After a while my co-worker started getting really crazy and threatening to tell my wife, whom I had a child with and a baby on the way, about everything. Obviously. I kept trying to cut things off because I realized I was making a mistake. She lost it one night and was freaking out and texting me telling me she was going to come to my house. And a drunk driver hit her. She died instantly. No one knows I was having an affair. And my family went to her funeral. Edit, oh man. Sorry Reddit for answering the question honestly. Next time I'll remember to keep this to myself. Also thanks for the gold. Edit edit, shout out to all the people who think I should have died instead. And are encouraging me to go ahead and tell the one secret that would ruin my life. This secret is a bad one. When I was 15 and incredibly lonely one summer I decided to make an Acupid account. For those of you who don't know that's a dating website for people 18 plus. I looked probably about 17 at the time but I guess I could pass for 18. So I said I was 18 on my account. I got a lot of responses from guys instantly. There was this one that stood out to me. His name was James. He was a 22 year old college student working at Tim Hortons. But me at 15 thought he was the most intelligent and beautiful person I've ever met. We talked for 3 months and then he turned 23. Now the age gap was 8 years. After those 3 summer months of staying up all night we decided to meet up in person. It was Labor Day weekend when we met up. He picked me up from a gas station and drove me to his house. We live 3 hours away and I told him that my car didn't work but really I only had my permit and no car. I honestly think I fell in love with him and we hit it off completely. He was really attractive and different from guys my age. Guys my age would make fun of how I looked because they were insecure themselves and tease me a lot when they were interested in me. Which just confused me. But James would compliment me and joke with me but never made me feel insecure. I really loved him. But when the relationship progressed he was talking about having sex and I told him that I was a vagine which he was okay with. But after I turned 16 I realized that he was a 23 year old man who could get in a lot of trouble if he was to sleep with me. I never told him my age because I knew he'd be disgusted with himself so I just cut all ties with him all day. I figured it was selfish to keep him around. He needed somebody who could be 100% honest with him. So in March I basically blocked him on all social media and my phone. He didn't know where I lived and I never saw or spoke to him again. It's been 2 years but I sometimes stalk his Facebook. He's actually engaged now and graduated college. I'm so happy that everything is going well for him. I'm only 18 now but I hope one day I'll find a guy who is as great as James. TLDR, I made an account on a dating website at 15 and formed a long relationship with a man who was 23 lying to him about my age. Edit, guys. If I told him about my age he'd be disgusted with himself. I was 15 at the time. I'm roughly 5 years into a relationship and still have no idea if I want to marry the girl. This was me last year. 5 years in she wanted to get engaged. She said I was the one. I wasn't sure. Because she was the only girlfriend I'd ever had. So I pushed her to pursue her career while I traveled. By the time I came home 8 months later I was ready to settle down. But it was too late, she had found happiness in another guy. I haven't heard her voice in over 4 months, I miss my best friend. Huh. I guess. The last good thread like this started 5 years ago today. So. I am 19. I am gay. My parents are very conservative Catholics and would disown me if they found out. Not only that. I have had oral and penetrative sex with several men. 
Most of my town are orthodox Christians and would ruin my life if my secret ever got out. The issue is. My voice is changing. And now I sound like a gay person and cannot stop it. Hope this gets buried. About 18 months ago I was watching the movie Yes Man and decided I'd say yes to everything for 24 hours. I ended up taking an ecstasy pill in the city. Then this woman said let's go do Drew Gus and I ended up buying and trying meth. It was in a crack house that was legitimately 10 meters across the road from the police station in the city's worst suburb. I then went to the casino and blew $1000. Let's just say that watching Yes Man is a good way of getting yourself out of a rut. Okay. So my family are super religious. Especially my mother. She wants me to be religious too. But I've become a bit disillusioned with religion. I know this would heal her. Simply for the fact that she's a refugee and her reliance on a higher power has gotten her through all of her struggles and strife without even a lick of PTSD. She's a single mother also and I just admire her so much getting to where she has without any help. I just don't think I'd ever tell her that I haven't been praying 5 times a day or even thinking about God in any way. It would heal her. I joined a job that is known for being absolutely miserable and a good chance of me getting healed. I love it. I was suicidal as a teenager and I gave up. Knowing I couldn't heal myself. Now I have a good chance of dying without me having to do anything. And to add to the goods. My family would get a whole lot of life insurance money if I got healed. So I could do them a lot of good becoming a corpse. If word ever got out. I'd be in a lot of trouble and probably pulled. I don't want it. I need this edge or else I fall into a horrible depression. I need the challenge and risk. Edit. For those who guessed. Yes I am military. What secret could ruin my life? I secretly take off my hijab. On social media I wear the hijab. In front of all my parents. Other family. Most of my friends. I wear a hijab. Here's my story. When I graduated two years ago I decided to look for a job. And I wasn't able to land anything. I came up with the, the idea to start interviewing without wearing one. And once I get an offer I'd start wearing it again. I ended up getting two great job offers, which made me really sad that my theory of taking it off and easily finding a job was true. I took one and haven't worn it to work at all. I don't know what happened in the mix of things. I guess I started to like the attention men gave me and I actually felt like I belonged normal with my peers. It was a feeling I've never felt. Everyone started treating me different. As if I was worth speaking to. I don't get weird lucks anymore. I don't get asked weird questions. I'm too afraid to tell my parents about it because of disappointment and I'm even more afraid of the Muslim community finding out. Bullying and talking sheet happens a lot to girls who take it off. I wear it to family functions. And when I'm at a place where I know I can run into someone I know. So yes in essence I guess I am living a double life. Say what you want I'm okay for now living like this. I keep changing my mind on what I permanent want to do. Finding out that I have a mental disability and my whole life people have hidden it from me, treated me the same as if I was normal. Wow. This is actually my biggest fear. That I'm actually a bit mental and the fam just plays it off like no big deal. Let's make him feel normal to fit in. Am I actually special? TL. Doctor I healed my family. One night about a decade ago. When I was 8 years old. I couldn't sleep at night so I was just walking around the house. Looking for something to do. It was winter. So there was fire in the fireplace. I started playing with it. Throwing stuff into it. Watching how it burns. At one point. A big log rolled out of the fireplace. As a kid. I started to panic. I tried to cover it with a blanket. Then ran out to the kitchen to get some water. When I came back. The whole living room was on fire. It was a wooden house. I was terrified. Ran out of the house. Literally within a minute. It was burning like crazy. My older sister. Younger brother. And mom who was pregnant at the time. All died instantly. Dad was working a night shift. No one really questioned me. 
My room had window. And I said I left through it when I saw the fire. The real cause has never been found. My dad was absolutely devastated and a few weeks later shot himself. I found his body. I've been living with my grandparents ever since. No one knows what really happened that night. I spent half of my life with therapists. I hate myself. Have a severe depression. Attempted a suicide a while ago. I smoke weed almost every day. I'm in line for a promotion and have been working hard to get it. If my boss found out there's no way she would give it to me. She hates weed and is vocal about it. It wouldn't be so much the weed Just that I didn't tell her. Throw away. I have literally fabricated my entire life and identity. I am not who I say I am and my backstory is not the one anyone knows. At any moment. I could be revealed and that terrifies me. I didn't expect to build a life for myself under this identity. It was never supposed to last. Now I'm stuck. When I was about 5 years old. My sister, 2 years old, and I were in the backyard in a kiddie pool. When my mom went inside. I attempted to drown my sister. After I saw her lifeless. I realized that it was a big mistake. Pulled her out of the pool and called for my mom. Luckily she knew CPR and she was life flighted to the hospital. My mom thanked me for saving her. Pulling her out of the pool. Next week was my birthday. The police. Firefighters. Paramedics came to my house to give me gifts and celebrate my birthday. To this day 20 years later. I still think about it. I remember the day so vividly. Not a soul knows the real truth. Two years ago for 4 months I was an escort sugar baby. Money given to a mistress in my country is considered a gift and tax free on her part. I needed the money badly. I hadn't eaten a proper 3 meals for a while and couldn't get work at all. My first week I made $2000 for a weekend's work. I didn't hate it either. My main visitor was a nice enough person and though a lot older than I was he wasn't an attractive. It felt pretty empowering at the time too. I just had a weird breakup, in that he went to England and didn't tell me about it until he arrived. I figured after that if people were so intent on screwing me over I may as well make okay out of the deal too. It stopped because my grandfather passed away and I was asked to stay with my nana for a while to keep her company, it doesn't take long to lose contact with people. I don't regret it I needed the money. Felt weirdly beautiful. And learned some things. But my field of study will most likely put me into work in a Catholic or otherwise religious school setting and there aren't many men I imagine would be okay with that sort of past. I want to die. Not because anything bad has happened in my life. But because I am curious as to what would happen if I did it. I spend a lot of time learning about various regions idea of what happens when you die. Purely because of how curious I am. I have never been diagnosed with anything and died out that I will ever heal myself ever to find out but if I was ever told I was going to die I probably wouldn't be too bothered about because I get to find out all I have ever wanted to know. Where do we go when we die? My best friend had a girlfriend in a different state. They were dating for almost 2 years. We all were friends and talked and after they broke up. We kept talking. We both came to realize we had feelings for each other. I had a cousin in the same state who I went to visit over spring break. We met up and ducked. He has no idea we ever talked and if he ever did I don't think he would speak to me anymore. There is a super high possibility that I have a child. A girl I was with. Who turned out to be crazy. Lied about being on birth control. The times like up almost too good and it looks kind of like me. Since then she has been married and her and her husband seem happy together so I've never worried about it. I forged my high school transcripts to get into university. I can't even think about the consequences to my actions if anyone were to ever find out. I'm 3 weeks shy of graduating with a degree in biology. You're an inspiration to delinquents like me everywhere. Good luck graduating. Here's the kicker, I'm graduating with honors. I think I was graped. I'm not sure. I was driving through Texas and stayed at one of my dad's friend's house from his four wheel drive forum. 
probably not the best idea in hindsight but he seemed like a good guy. He cooked me dinner. Bought me snacks for the road trip and gave me gas money. We had been drinking and bulleting and I realized that I was a little too drunk for how much I had drunk and so I went to bed. I woke up in the middle of the night suddenly and the door to the room I was staying in was open. I don't remember anything but I just remember feeling a need to get the duck out of there the next morning. He offered to cook me breakfast and what not and I just said no I had a long day of driving and wanted to go. My butt was hurting the next few days. I don't know if it was cause I had been driving for 8-10 hours a day for a few days. I don't know what happened that night. But I've always thought I was graped. It was just so weird. I don't know how to explain it. This happened a little over 2 years ago. This is the first time I've ever written or said anything about it. I've slept with a lot of guys ranging from 20-75. My parents would trip because they are really conservative. Also. I'm 18 years old and a dude. I'm using a proxy to access websites that are blocked. I live in an Islamic country so if the police find out about it. I could get arrested. Don't know if it counts. But when I was 15 I looked like a hybrid of McLovin and Napoleon Dynamite and was bullied by this mammoth fat lineman at school. This kid easily weighed 3 times as much as me. But one day I got sick of his sheet. This day also happened to be the day before our final exam in world history. While he was at wrestling practice after school. I went into his locker and stole his textbook. Studer guide. And notebook and took them home with me that night. The next morning. I got to school extra extra early. And put all of the stolen stuff perfectly back in his locker. He rolled in that morning itching to the administration about how someone stole all his stuff. But when he walked them over to his locker and his stuff was sitting right there. He looked like a total dumbass and the admins refused to help him check the cameras. Pretty sure he failed the test too. At the time. I'm pretty sure he would have beat the living duck out of me had he found out. TLDR. I was a nerd and got revenge in classic nerd fashion. This question always makes me wonder about the horrible secrets that people can't bring themselves to talk about. Even in a semi-anonymous place like Reddit. The people here who have spoken up already have pretty intense secrets. Just imagine the secrets that go unshared. The plain truth is that I can't deal with the pain of the disease. My daughters can't accept that I am so sick. My husband can't conceive of losing me, but I'm sick and I am going to die. And I'd be at peace if they could be okay without me. But I'm gonna miss my grandbabies. They are so lovely. Baby Teddy is so perfect. This is the first time I have ever typed this out or told anyone. Not even my wife. I was horribly shy when I was a kid. I did not make many friends and so when I met my then best friend it was so great. I was probably 11 I guess when it happened and really sheltered. We did everything together and he was a really good friend but he started changing. He started acting more effeminate and looking back he was learning growing into his sexuality. We were best friends and there was a trust between the two of us. He started wanting to run around naked and look at me naked and I was a late bloomer so I had no idea that this was sexually based. Thought it was just guy stuff. He never did anything to me other than grab my pen 15 and try to jerk me off while I was flaccid. I was 11 and not gay so I didn't know what was going on. He then started getting really mean and made fun of the size of my pen 15 all the time and became really toxic to be around. I just wanted my friend back. I quit hanging out with him and made other friends and blocked out what happened to me but every now and then I remember and I almost feel like I was graped. I think it did a number to my confidence growing up. The only person I have slept with is my wife because I was always so worried about the size of my big dick. I realize now that it was stupid to be so worried about it because if the person you are with is so concerned about something like that then they just aren't meant for you and it is time to move on. I just wish it never happened to me. I know other stories here are way worse but this is mine and it was traumatic to young me. Edit, I know this one hasn't blown up like other topics on here but it was really cathartic to finally get it out. Thanks anyone for reading this. Not sure if it could ruin my life. But I think I'd lose some of my friends respect. 
and definitely my family's. Which I find ridiculous. I felt, and still feel, my actions were justified. So I used to be bullied ever since I started going to school. I was big for my age. But I was considered a nerd and was also rather awkward, still am but not so much. One day I just snapped. As it turned out that a friend I had had for two and a half years, my only friend, was really just doing it as a sickbed game dare that the other students put him up to. After I found out they kept laughing at me and how I had believed I could ever have a friend. I waited until school was over and asked my mom to drop me off at the friend's house. As I knew he took the bus and would arrive later. I beat him near senseless and even though he begged me to stop I kept going. I never felt so good in my life. I also found the kid who had the idea. I got the friend to rat on him and did something similar to him. Granted I still didn't have any friends. But you can bet not one of those scumbags dared laugh at me again. Teachers always said violence wasn't the answer. Well if they don't want things like these to happen they should get their sheet together and do their job for once. Deal with the bullies. Especially when a child brings them proof that he is being bullied. I got tired of waiting and took matters into my own hands. Well guess what it worked. I'm not attracted to my wife when she's high. She smokes weed up. And I'm fine with the fact she does. But I don't like the person she is when she's high. She's not as sharp. Is forgetful. Indecisive. And generally disconnected with the world. In other words. The exact opposite of the person I fell in love with. I don't mind that she likes feeling that way. But she wants to be that way all the time. Sometimes I'd like to feel like she wants to be around me and the family without having to be stoned. She's got a lot of anxiety issues. And a few other things that make living with her difficult. But those kinds of things I want to help her with and get through together. I don't feel like I can do that when she prefers lighting up over talking through stress. Edit. Thank you all for the support you've given. I didn't think I would get this much advice and conversation from this. I think I'm going to talk to her about this and see what help I can find for her anxiety.